Hello, in this video I will demonstrate the alarm timeline component. This component is able to visualize the alarm history of a parameter or a cell in a dynamic timeline. It's also possible to zoom in or navigate through the timeline as we do with the trend component. When you start making a drawing or using a component, it's usually a good idea to first check the data miner help to find out more information about it. So let's go to there. As with all uh, Visio features, this location is under um, basic data miner functionality and then Visio drawings. It's turning a shape into a control and the last page is explaining how you can embed an alarm, alarm timeline component. The, the most basic configuration is by specifying an element and also a parameter ID. So let's do that. Let's go to a, a Linux platform driver um, that we have in-house and let's say we want to visualize the physical memory usage. So let's see what the parameter ID is of this parameter. It's 1005, so let's start off. I have a very basic uh, visual drawing with just a rect rectangle. So uh, we will start from scratch and see um, what we can add as features. So as you can see, nothing is added to this shape, so let's start off. There are two important shape data fields that we have to specify. It's parameters and options. As you can find in the data miner help, the option that you need to specify is alarm timelines. Now for parameters, that's just the element ID and then the parameter ID as we saw. Now we can use placeholders in this, in this context. So you can type in this element ID and it will dynamically fetch the element ID of the element where the visual drawing is linked to. Now add a column and then we specify the parameter ID of the physical memory usage. Save it and let's see what it gives. It directly gives you an overview of the alarm timeline, alarm history of this parameter. And as you can see, we can easily zoom out, zoom in, or navigate through the timeline. Now, it's also possible to specify the communication state or other general parameters. So let's do that as well. We can easily put here. Let me just double check on the parameter ID. Yes, 64,501. And this will give you the communication state of the element. So whether it was in time mode or the communication went good. So we can easily show that to you in a very nice, nice drawing. It's also possible to, um, to point to specific cells, I, as I said in the introduction. So let's go to network info and let's say we want to uh, visualize the Eric's data rate. Let's go to the visual. Okay. I will just duplicate the, the page for now. What we now can do is go to the the parameter to see what the parameter ID is of this uh, RX, RX data rate, 616. And let's say we want to visualize this second row because it um, points to the external interface. And we need the index, which is two in this case. So we 
put the parameter ID and then the index. Just like that. We save and let's see what it gives. We have a second page now and as you can see it directly visualizes the alarm timeline of that specific uh, cell. Now what is also possible is to use a subscription filter instead of the of the index. So let's say we can remove the index and then you can define a subscription filter. This is also explained in the data miner help. So let's let me check that. Here you can see you can use a column index or a subscription filter. And the dynamic table filters are also visualized what you can do with it. So let's say we want to use this sub sub subscription filter. You put value equals and then we find out uh, on which we want to uh, put the filter. So let's say we want to have the operational status that needs to be up. This is parameter 610. And let us put that in the visual. So 610 has to be up, which is one in this case. Let me save it. And let us see what it gives us. So yeah, indeed it gives the same exact timeline as um, both of the interfaces are up. Now I have demonstrated how to visualize one entry on the alarm timeline. But it's also possible to show multiple entries. On this component, we have two uh, concepts. We have the band definition and the parameter definition. A band definition is, as the name it says, it's the band, you can give it a clear name, and it contains one or multiple parameter definitions. For example, two uh, cells in a table. Now, to be able to show that to you, let's navigate back to the Visio. Let's say we want to visualize the total processor load, which was parameter 1005, uh, the physical memory usage, which was parameter 1005, and also the total processor load, which the ID um, is 10. So let's go back to our Visio and let's try that out. Okay, I will again duplicate the page. And the first parameter was 1005. Now, how you can visualize um, a band definition is by using the pipe separator. So you use a pipe and then you just add another parameter de um, definition to another band. So this is parameter ID 10. If I save that and I will show that on cube. We have now a new page and as you can see we have new two bands. The first one is the uh, physical memory usage and the other one is the total processor load. Now you can also do that for parameter definitions within one band because now we have two bands. Let's say we want to visualize the two Rx data rates from the table. So I will show you how you can easily do that for this row and this row. We use these two indexes. So the parameter ID was 616 and the first index. And then instead of a pipe, we use a dash. And then for, we put the second parameter uh, definition uh, for the second parameter. Now, if you try to save that, in my current uh, cube, you will only see one. Um, but 
this is and this can be fixed by using an extra option on the on the shape data field and I will show that to you so we go to the data miner help and here you can add a few options I will go over them um, as seen fit but for now what is um, useful it's the height so the height um, is defined in um, a number between 0 and 1 so let's try that out So after each parameter uh, description, you can add a semicolon and then all the options that you need. Let's say we want a height of 50% for the first index and also for the second index. So let's save and see what it gives us. Now you can see we have one band and two um, parameter definitions within this band. As you can see, it shows you the alarm timeline uh, as you see on the, the actual component. Now, when a user comes to this physio, it's not clear what this is about. So now let's uh, see what the op other options contain and that we can utilize to make this physio more clear. So the first option is include in summary. This include in summary, um, relies on a parameter definition. So you can give that to a parameter definition and it will also introduce um, the display name of that band. So if you have, like in this use case, two bands, you will, uh, you will be able to see two band definitions, um, which are different. Here, these are two parameter definitions in one band. Here you will see only one, uh, one display name. So let's try this out. So let's say we want to uh, include in summary on the first band and we put a semicolon and then uh, include in summary. Save. Wait a moment and then you will see that the um, first band has a display name. It also has uh, a summary of the severities during the timeline um, that is now shown. In the display name is as defined in the help. It's um, the name of the element, then the name of the parameter, and then optionally the name uh, of the index. We use the same option in this um, in the two parameter definitions. So let's say we want first on the first uh, parameter definition and you will see that the display name is linked to the two bands. The timeline contains only the summary of the first uh, parameter definition as you can see. Now let's say we want to add also the include and summary to the second parameter definition. We add the semicolon include and summary and we will see that it will also contain now the severity of the second band. However, the name, the display name of the band is still not that clear. So what we can do is we have another option called display name. We can put that on the parameters shape data field. Well, we add a, sec um, a third semicolon display name equals and then rx data rate. We save, go to the visio, and then we will see a more clear uh, display name. Now I have showed you the basic configuration of the alarm timeline component, but we can make it also dynamic. For example, I prepared a little bit uh, two toggle buttons local and external. This represents the interfaces, the local interface and the external interface. We can, by, me, by using session variables, toggle it between uh, whether we want to show it or not. So let me first explain in short um, how these uh, toggle buttons are created. 
For example, for the local interface, we have a session variable called show local, and we have two shapes ab above each other. We have the cross and the check. The cross is shown if this show local session variable is empty, and if it's shown, it's, we're able to click on it. And uh, what we set is the syntax uh, for the uh, parameters used in the alarm timeline components. We need to use a different separator because we use colons in this context and this would collide with the syntax of the setVar command. I also uh, yeah, placed a small tooltip and used the hover type and geometry option to easily or to nicely have the enable the hyperlink around the circle instead of a square. Now on the, on the check it's just um, the opposite. So it hides the shape if it's empty. And it's also set uh, the show local variable to empty. I have also two init var um, or two session variables um, enabled in my init var, where I introduce the show local and the show external session variables with empty values by default. So for this demonstration, let's just use the alarm timeline components uh, from the first example. And what we do is we just place the two session variables in this context. So we had the first um, session variable. Then we show it in a different band just for the purpose of sh um, showing this feature. So now we show two parameters, show local and show external. And this is the only thing that we need to do, except for a few options. So let's go to dataminer help to show you uh, what you also need. As these session variables could be empty, they can both be um, um, unselected. We need to have um, an empty text, just something that we um, show to the user um, if both of the parameters are empty. So let's first add this. So it's two options. We add a pipe, empty text, and no parameters selected. We also need to add another uh, option. It's called allow dynamic entries. This option is used because um, if within time the session variable cannot be retrieved for some reason, it will just disregard that uh, session variable instead of not showing the components. So let's also add this. Now we can save and see what it gives us. So as you can see, we have no parameters selected. We can now add um, the parameters as we see fit. In this video, I showed you how you can visualize the alarm timeline component with one or multiple entries in parameter or band definitions, and also how you can um, statically or dynamically fill in values.